welcome to another lecture of uh, hr analytics this is our lecture number seven uh, in this lecture we will be talking about uh, the training need assessment and how do you do it in uh, for example in excel and what is the process behind it and then we'll also talk about the training cost and benefit analysis or the roi analysis return on investment when we talk about training so let's just first understand the concept and then we will move to our excel file and we will try and understand how we can calculate these things so first of all uh, what is tna or the training need assessment sometimes people call it training need analysis uh, need assessment of the training it is actually done to know if your employees need training or they're okay without the training or what level uh, of the training is required so the idea is that uh, it should be linked with something it's not that you just give trainings to your people uh, randomly it should be connected to what those people are doing and why those trainings are required so for example if we just look at the simple process this is a well-known uh, tna process so first you need to become aware of your uh, mission and vision of the company so let's say if a company is saying that they want to become the best service provider among their competitors and by this our goals are going to be to gain 100 percent customer satisfaction so your vision uh, drives your goals and then in order to get this 100% uh, customer satisfaction what you need to do is you need to entertain your customer queries face to face for which you will require good communication skills uh, to talk to your customers so now if 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 everything is linked till here then what you do is you actually look at your uh, uh, people and what kind of communication skills they already have and how you are going to take them to a level where they can gain 100% customer satisfaction using the customer queries uh, entertainment by using good communication skills. So let's suppose uh, your, the required skills of communication are 10 out of 10. So they should be very good in communication. But when you take an example of certain employee, he has five out of 10 skills. So you can easily see that there's a gap of 50% of uh, the skill level improvement uh, through which you can gain this uh, customer satisfaction. You can entertain the queries and eventually you will be able to meet your uh, goals and achieve your mission and visions or at least move towards them. So let's just do it uh, in our uh, Excel file. Now you can see here that uh, let's suppose we have uh, these employees. These are just random names of the employees. These are their positions. And this is the skill level that they already have. And out of 10, we are talking out of 10. So four out of 10, nine out of 10, eight out of 10 is the level of the skills that they have. So this is just a simple example in our Excel file. If you have the data, you can very easily see if there's a, a need of the training in a particular employee. So these are the names of the employees. These are their positions. And we are actually interested in this data, first of all. What is this data? This data is showing us the current level of the skill of an employee. So let's just say that this person, Liam, has nine out of 10 level of skill currently. And in order to achieve your goals, you need to have four out of 10 skills. This is the minimum requirement. And then let's also look at uh, this, James. The current level is five, the requirement is two. And if you look at this uh, five number employee, you can see that the current level is two, but the required level is nine. So what you simply do is you do simple plus minus maths. 
So the answer that you're going to get will come here, which means that uh, this person lacks one level of skills in order to achieve those goals. This person lacks seven levels, five, four, uh, whereas in, for example, this case, it is zero. In the case of William, he has eight level of uh, the skill and he requires eight level. So now what we can do is we can conclude here that if there is a need of the training to that particular employee or there's no need. So in simple word, words, if there's a gap of the level of training or the level of uh, skill that is required, then obviously you need to give this person, this person and all the people who have got minus uh, numbers, they require trainings. But anybody who's got zero or anything in plus will not be needing any uh, uh, trainings for these particular skills. So this is how you can easily calculate if your uh, people, they require training or not. Now let's just look at another uh, concept, uh, which is uh, the issue in justifying the training cost. So first of all, just do a little bit of uh, brainstorming. The money that you spent on training, should it go to the expense side of the books or the investment side of the books? So take a moment and just think that whenever the cash flow is showing uh, the training cost, usually people call it training cost. So where should we place it? Generally, it is placed in the expense part or you can say good expense. But the problem is uh, that if it's an expense, it should be reduced because the basic uh, idea of the business is that uh, they need to make money and especially in the time of recessions and in times of uh, financial crunch, people try and decrease their expenses. So sometimes you also decrease the training expense. But if you put them uh, in the investment side, the finance people or the accounting people, they will be asking you for the return on investment. So how do HR people uh, justify the cost or the investment that they're doing uh, on training. Now the biggest question for uh, the HR people is to how they should justify the training cost. For example, if, you, if they are trying to convince their uh, top management or uh, the other people that training is good for the people. So how should they do it? So let's just try and understand it on our uh, Excel analysis sheet. Okay, this is our uh, sheet of the data, but the idea is that first we need to understand a few things, few important data points, because otherwise we will not have an idea that how we can justify the cost. So this is uh, simply the employee ID, the serial number. Uh, this is important, which means that the cost of the training is $3,000 or 3,000 rupees or whatever. So 3,000. Now the HR is trying to spend 3,000 for this one person. Uh, another data to understand is that the person is taking $20,000 or 20,000 rupees as a salary, which means it is on a monthly basis. Now, the other important data points to understand are, first of all, this one. This is the productivity of a person per month, which means the person is taking 20,000 salary and he or she is producing 215 units before the training. T1 is the time one, which is pre-training and post-training is T2. So let's do not confuse ourselves. 20,000 rupees is the amount of money that person is taking, that employee, and 215 products the person is making. So if you simply divide this, this 20,000 with 215, you will get the cost per unit or the labor rate per unit before you give the training to that person. 
सो दैट इज नाइन्टी थ्री पॉइंट जीरो टू रुपीज और डॉलर पर यूनिट सो दिस इज हाउ मच दिस पर्सन इज कॉस्टिंग यू इन द फॉर्म ऑफ लेबर कॉस्ट पर यूनिट ना वॉट इज हैपनिंग इज वेन यू गिव हिम हर द ट्रेनिंग देन यू अगेन कलेक्ट द डेटा विच इज टी टू विच इज पोस्ट ट्रेनिंग पोस्ट ट्रेनिंग सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग नाउ आफ्टर द ट्रेनिंग द पर्सन स्टार्टड मेकिंग टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी फाइव यूनिट्स पर मंथ सो दिस डेटा इज बिफोर द ट्रेनिंग एंड बिकॉज नाउ दे हैव इम्प्रूव सम स्किल्स और समथिंग now they have started making more units in the same time and you can also see that uh, we're not going to change the salary the salary will remain the same only through the training the person will start making more units so when the person will start making more units within the same salary so now we will divide 20000 with 255 which will give us this cost which is the labor rate unit after the training now it is 78.43 now what is happening here is that the cost of the per unit labor cost was 93 now it has reduced to 78.43 technically so how much are we saving so we have started saving 14 rupees 14.59 rupees per unit this will additionally give us let's say 583 rupees uh of saving or the total improved labor cost uh per person so that means uh the in the same salary person has started producing more and eventually the labor uh rate has also come down uh now this is happening in a few cases it's not happening in a few cases because people are not improving or the training um, might not uh be helpful but you can see here that some trainings are helpful now th this is the way of convincing your top management that training will eventually effect now in other terms how can we calculate the roi so just to make it simple the total cost of the training to all the employees the 19 employees is 57000 rupees or dollars and how much are we saving is 10000 rupees 10087 rupees or dollars how do we calculate the roi so what you will say is that you you are going to divide this value which is the total cost with the total benefit that you are getting or the improved labor cost that you are getting so in about 5.65 months because all these values are on monthly basis in 5.65 or let's say 6 months time you will be getting this much money back in the form of roi uh and then after that it's going to be all profit so this is how then you actually technically justify your top management or uh, the finance people that training might be good for uh, your employees and for the overall health of your organization so this is how you can calculate training but you need to have the data uh, from your previous uh, uh, trainings and also you need to collect data at t1 which is the time 1 and t2 for the improved labor cost or improved labor rate or how much units people were making you can also link it to like customer satisfaction that at t1 customer satisfaction was let's say 80% and after you gave the training of communication now it is let's say 90% so there's an a, a significant growth in the customer satisfaction rate which will eventually give you room to uh, retain those customers and make more profits so this is all about from this lecture uh, i'll see you in the next lecture thank you